Hello, this is uh, chapter three, part three of Homeless Bird. <clears throat> I just want to let you know that there is a page or two missing, but I can explain to you what happens. So starting here, <clears throat> Sister and Mr. Lau helped Harry from his cot and eased him into the water. As the water slid over his body, Harry appeared surprised as if he could not believe that at long last, Ma Ganges was wrapping herself about him. I did not know whether I might be allowed to step into the water myself. When I looked at Sass, she nodded her head. It was still early in the morning and the water felt cool on my legs. I waited, not knowing what to expect. Harry had been too weak to walk to the river on his own legs, but now the river seemed to strengthen him. He had taken his shirt off to bathe, and I could see draped over his left shoulder the sacred thread given to Brahmin boys when they come of age. He called out to me, Coley, look here, I can make myself float. Try it for yourself. Harry played about in the water, even splashing me. For the first time, I could see what Harry must have been like before he became so sick. I thought he was very like my brothers. Sester was shocked. This is not a game, son. It is a sacred river to be treated with respect. Though he scolded, I saw that he was pleased at Harry's liveliness. Harry's liveliness did not last. He had to be helped from the river. He was shivering. So at this point, there's a page that is missing, but um, <clears throat> unfortunately, Harry actually dies. And so now um, Coley is uncertain as to what's going to happen to her. So she is thinking that her mother-in-law and father-in-law, um, Sass and Sasser, will have nothing to do with her. So that's where we pick up right here. I was nothing now. I could not go back to my parents and be a daughter again. I was no longer a wife or a bahus, a daughter-in-law. Yes, I thought, I am something. I am a widow. And I began to sob. In the morning, Harry's body was wrapped in a cloth and covered with garlands of marigolds. I put one of the garlands on him for Chandra. Harry was carried on a bamboo platform through the streets to the Ganges. Walking behind the platform were Mr. Lal and his wife, Harry's parents and I, and a priest who was a friend of Mr. Lal's. As we walked along, we chanted over and over, Rama, Nama, Satya, Hai. The name of Ru Rama is Truth. This time the crowds did not push past us, but stood a little aside to let us by. A few men joined in our chants and followed us for a short distance. There were many processions like ours that morning, all moving toward the Ganges. Some of the processions were accompanied by music and dancing, for in the midst of the sorrow, there was happiness that the death had taken place in Varanasi. Only the men accompanied Harry's body to the, to the Manakarnika Ghat for this cremation. After the cremation, the scattering of Harry's ashes over the Ganges would set his soul free by returning his body to fire, water, and earth. As we three women waited at a respectable distance, we clung to one another. I could hear the men recite the chants for the dead. Harry's voice was to, was to go to the sky, his eyes to the sun, his ear to the heavens, his body to the earth, and his thoughts to the moon. Finally, we heard the words, Amar Rahain, live eternally, and the ceremony was over. When the men returned, we made our way quietly back toward the Lalza's house. As we walked through the Golden Temple, a dove wove a pattern just above our heads. I knew that the spirit of the dead hovers about for a time, and the swooping dove seemed very like Harry. Before we left Varanasi, Sass purchased a cheap white cotton sari for me. It is what widows wear, she said. <clears throat> 